Welcome everyone to the next stop in our um, Christmas marathon for 2023. Now, before we start, I want to preface this myself with a uh, very important disclaimer. No, a movie having a message is not a bad thing. Hell, a movie having a message that is as subtle as a brick to the face isn't always a bad thing. The problem is, this movie doesn't do that well. At See, all, Lips, really. uh, you made a good point, but you're a man, therefore technically you're automatically wrong. Okay. Where is this going? Shiri, oh. you have no goddamn idea. I'm okay. scared. Okay. 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 Is this, this is a um. This is a movie. This is a movie that even Chris Stockman, one of the nicest critics on the internet, he hates this film. The 2019 version of Black Christmas, starring um. Imogen, I really should fire my agent, Poots. Okay, so this is sort of another sequel to our Halloween commentary. Since you'll recall, we did the very original Black Christmas movie of 1974 mm. and the first remake of 2006. As for this, well, Wikipedia describes it as, and I quote, the loose second remake. Loose is a good term because there is no Billy in this one. The slasher is more associated, the slashing is more associated to a group of people rather than just one. And the only thing that this is as in common with any of the other two is that it stars a, a sorority group of girls in a university club. But otherwise, that's it. It's not even a case where the murders happens only in the house or around the house. This involves the entire university. This is as close to e-name only as it can get. So I guess on the plus side, if you're a fan of the original, there's not much that it can be ruined for you, I guess. From what I can garner, anyone who is a fan of the original doesn't really care for this. Like, it got mixed reviews from critics, but the overall reputation of this movie is... Well, internet-wise, not exactly been kind from what I have seen. Like, okay, it technically was a success on a budget of $5 million, it made $18.5 million, but it seems like it's a Pyrrhic victory at best, since, again, the only people who really talk about this movie don't really have nice stuff to say about it these days, and even back then in 2019, I don't recall there being much positive buzz for this movie. No, oh. not to mention, not to not to mention how how rushed the production of the movie yeah. seemed. The oh. film was announced in the film was announced in June two thousand nineteen. Production started in New Zealand later that month on June twenty third. It lasted twenty seven days. Ended on July thirty first. The film was released on December thirteenth wow, in so the US. Was even, so this movie was even more rushed than Child's Play Free. Jason Blum is not, uh, you know, a, a, str a stranger to this kind of tactic uh, for making these movies because, you know, cheap and efficient and not necessarily always on the cheap side in a sense. Spend the less money as possible, take less time to do guaranteed profit, which did work out also in this case. Maybe not as much as he wanted, but he did, but he did. The problem is, again, we had to hope that the actors and crew involved, you know, were fine enough in doing this. But trust me, I'm that's the least of the worries you have to take yeah. when you get the, uh, the movie. Yeah. The director is Sophia Takal, who also co-wrote co -wrote the movie along with April Wolf. Um, Takal's previous credits include mm -hmm. directing stuff such as Green, Always Shine, an episode of Into the Dark, and more recently, um, episodes of Gossip Girl and The Summer I Turned Pretty. So, mostly a TV director, and I legit have not heard of those in any other movies. But All right, so let's not beat about the lucky. bush. Start before the Universal logo in three, two, one, go. This is gonna be also painful. Too, also, too, uh, like yourself said, uh, um, all, the four of us are men, so we might as well make this a Shiroi solo commentary. At the well, okay. I, will say, I will say this. Uh, among all of us, uh, I will take her opinion in consideration the most, uh, because I do believe, uh, this joke, all bullshit joking aside, uh, I do believe she's the more qualified to tell us uh, the degree that this movie's message is. Uh. Well, I no definitely... Well, I definitely <laughs> agree that she may be the most qualified. I have never bought into the narrative that, based off of someone's gender, that means that they can or can't actually comment on okay. how well done stuff is. You didn't say that, though. 
I'm sorry, go on. Oh, I know, I know, I know, but, like, I get why he's mentioning that you'd be the most qualified, since that is kind of the mentality that a lot of the internet will run on, or at least the yeah. people who try and white knight this sort of stuff. Man like, possesses powers so formidable they can only be considered supernatural. With a proper education, man can wield these powers and go forth with the world. Keep in what mind, does that... the, the, this statement, which is very clearly fictional, um, refers to mankind as a whole, kind of like yeah. X-Men. Oh, thank Let me God. put it... Um... Let me put it this way, Shiro. You, you, you know you know how she is because I've already told you about about her. This is the kind of movie that I have to tell Vanessa. Don't watch this thing. This thing will this you'll you'll fucking trust me. Throw a fit at this thing. Despite so you, you, you already know why because you've told I've told you about her. Despite what you will see in this movie, there isn't so much fun that you can have in this. Uh, depends no on fun your point. That depends on your point of view because I will remind this by my my final thoughts, but I can tell this. Uh, with, the, with this premise alone, I do believe you could have still make a very fun movie out of it with a good message to boot. The problem is mostly the kind of tone that the movie chooses, at least in my opinion, to describe this message and its conclusion. But again, we literally are just starting, so you'll have to see. All right, so let's talk about the production company behind this. Blumhouse Productions, arguably one of the most successful current horror film developers to date. And Universal is keeping them very close because of this. Now, okay, to give Blumhouse Productions credit, I can see why their strategy does for the most part work. They do relatively good of a good sense of freedom, but relatively limited budgets. This causes the people that they give projects to to actually have to think outside the box and do some very creative means and actually getting good horror stories told out of it. I would argue we've seen it succeed more than it fail. That being said, there are still some failures, including this movie at least when it comes to reception, because... Yeah, Blumhouse also subscribed to the narrative of pretty much machine gunning out all their Bro, products the for better or for worse. Sticks. Again, now, to give them credit, I'd say it's worked more than it hasn't, but it is not a flawless procedure. They have had quite a few duds here and there, and they can usually bounce back from those even if they fail financially because they tend to have that much back in the bank. I think their most expensive movie was the recent Five Nights at Freddy's movie, and well, needless to say, that one turned out a profit. Mm -hmm. Also, again, to, to get this also out of the way, the thought process making behind the, the behind this movie, I actually understand it, and I think it's a natural conclusion. Reimagining uh, the original story, which already had some level of empowerment, uh, you know, into a more modern context and making it about female empowerment, especially in a context like the one of a university where, in real life, you know, uh, women suffer a lot uh, for different reasons. That's not a bad idea, particularly in the context of a slasher, which gives the opportunity to these girls to actually... What you know, do Christmas Ham and a sorority girl have in common? Uh, You're all they're about chill. <laughs> They both squeal before they die. Uh, Bro, I, dare you, I, I would have said they're both about to get cut. Well, both jokes are stupid. Yeah, Again, they are. My... I do, be, I do believe that in gen, as a general thought process, I do believe that this movie is more about its execution than its conception, but you will see. I mean, okay, to give this movie credit, so... Also this one? There! Oh. This one looks like a, a discount Emily Blunt. Bring out your dad. I'm not dead. You'll be stoned out in a moment. Wait, where did he disappear to? He was legit right behind her. <laughs> We're doing the whole thing about teleportation. To be fair, Jova, I can tell you this. The movie will give an explanation to this. Trust oh, me. don't tell me they have hidden tunnels around the campus this time. This is not Vietnam, Jova. I mean, okay, to be fair, some college campuses actually and do And of have course we systems. cannot hear her because of this shit. Oh my. I guess it's obligatory that we need to have this kind of thing in every Black Christmas movie. Which, uh, might as well also use this to talk a few things that I got to learn in between the 2006 movie and this one. Um, 
Apparently, our theories about the the Weinstein's being responsible what? for the extra edginess of the 2006 movie are correct. Apparently, the original director wanted to make a more subtle and subdued kind of movie with a more suspense kind of vibe. Even included a, one of its own endings, which apparently is on the DVD Blu-ray uh, special features, that is still more calm than anything but the Weinsteins were the one who pushed to hype things up and apparently as a result the director decided to not uh, uh wanting to direct anything in terms of theatrical movies ever again oh so so essentially the... too, too long didn't read the blame the Weinstein is not the director so basically the killer was in the house the whole time and that's why he kept vanishing instead of and just murdered her killing with a her icicle creating a snow apparently of a snow angel. Oh, let me mark. guess the icicle will melt so that the murder weapon will be gone. That's a uh... Just to not to spoil too much but that's kind of how one of the mysteries in uh, Layton Brothers is. Uh. Black Christmas. Well, at least we have a Christmas movie now, kind of. And I, and I like how many movie, <laughs> How many of these movies can they make? Jesus. Yeah. Kitty. Free. Also, I like the fact that they use gothic font at least give more personality to the title. It's like a lion cat. Like, like. That's uh, a name. Yeah. No, I, I, I know. That's why I'm saying. Oh, I'm not sure about that, sure, because they should. We tend to have more for. Oh wait. Uh, mm. Oh, wait. Cross, cross species, but don't you see, guys? That's the same kind of cat that was in the original Black Christmas movie. We are keeping true to the lore. I get the idea. It's because of that. Oh, yeah. Because if I recall correctly, the director at some point uh, did mention something like she wasn't even sure to wanting to do a Black Christmas instead of wanting to do an original property. So I get the idea. These are might might be small a touches what? that Jason Blum asked her to do. Your monologue is killing you... me. Okay, I'm sorry. What does that mean? How do you lose a Boring diva cup? Okay, when it comes to Black Christmas, I legit do still have to wonder if this franchise is cursed. Now, I have yet to see this movie in full myself, so maybe it's better than I've been led to believe it is, but let's look at the past history with the franchise. While the original Black Christmas was arguably a progenitor of the slash genre film, it's not the most popular and unfortunately feels kind of incomplete. The first remake, made in 2006, which... God, looking back at the budgets, is technically the most financially successful of any of these movies. There's some food for thought. The first remake is a mess, but does feel more complete and actually did try to add on some new lore details. Even gave Billy, well, not only gave Billy a proper persona and backstory, but even gave him a daughter, too. Who was also his She's sister, but yeah, you know, horror tropes be horror tropes. The movie tries to be more on the level of, you know, what life for, you know, uh, you know, girls who go on university might be, including, you know, you know, on, the, on intimate levels. Like it gives you an idea this will be their natural routine, especially if her friends have been studied for long enough. Like I'll give it credit, you know, like okay, the stupid killer scene aside, and yeah, it's not a good scene when it's not a good start when I think that the killer is Jesus. kind of an idiot. Also, that Santa doll is creepy, but. To give the movie credit, I'm not having problems with these girls' dynamics so far. This seems relatively fine. 
Also, we might as well mention this core. Let me see. Uh, Don by do, 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 do. Uh, Will and Brooke Blair. Maybe they are siblings. I don't know. They were siblings or married. I don't Wait know. a minute. That house has kids. Why was the killer inside that house from the get go? Mm. But uh, anyway, oh. there you go. They're, they're it the was edge. those two kids in a trench coat. <laughs> that would be a Sure, why not? <laughs> Ed, I don't know if it's uh, all for college is fictional or not. Uh, um, I probably should have watched, uh, you know, some some other some reviews in preparation for this. But uh, as you can imagine, I don't tend to not stick too close to this movie very often. Does the movie state? This is a what... grand college building. Yeah. Does the movie state which uh, city this takes place in? I think so, but let me check again. Um, sure. City. Because hmm. yeah. we. <laughs> Okay. American I city. Go ahead. I go okay. Ahead from that's what people like to joke in my country. I'm mainly I'll asking because first. we do have a Nathaniel Hawthorne College over in New Hampshire. <laughs> oh, it's Carrie Elwes. Yeah, Carrie Elwes. Uh, clearly what? here. Okay, I will see if he's here for a paycheck, but as you will see later, he seems to be enjoying the role that he's given. Carrie Elwes, what a place for you to show up. Well, that's the thing. Nobody gives me work anymore, so... Hey, 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 that's not true. You'll be in Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. That is true, I guess. Also, the Lion King is still in time to bring him back for Saw 11. Hmm. So, Wesley See, from the, the Princess Bride and Robin Hood from Men in Tights. Nice. See, over here in my country, it's very difficult for college slash university graduates to get proper jobs so a lot of like to give you any, there's a common joke here uh yeah that makes sense the more time you spent in the portuguese education system the less qualified you are so i suppose they might be using a brand generic call foreign college to not have to pay rights maybe most definitely oh no and it begins uh <sighs> Look, look, I am not one to say that the messages of gender uh, yeah, equality... Yeah, that's pronounced. Look, I am not one to say that the messages of gender equality are not needed in today's media. Yes, women can get treated like crap. See, here is the problem, though, with, you know, the extreme nature of it. You will get people who assume that, well, only women can be marginalized, only women can be tormented, and then we get to the bit of believe all women, but, oh, don't believe men. Don't assume So apparently, that. um, so apparently Professor Mc, um, Sexist, um, has a petition against him circling around the university to have him fired, or college, or whatever. I don't know if that's become relevant to the plot yet. This is tip this is a very obnoxious uh, aspect of modern script writing. Create a straw man and destroy that straw man. Ding, ding, to ding. Prove your point. I think Pedro and there she is, Chris. You will learn very quickly to not like this character, um, mm. because I don't even know. I think mostly probably from writing director because I. Maybe it was even Jason Blum's executive manly. I want to give the benefit of the doubt because I don't know anything about who may be in, but um, Pedro got it right. The major problem that this movie has, uh, it's not so much the message. It's not so much about, you know, empowerment. Uh, it's the way it's presented by mostly using strongman figures on either sides of the argument uh, and being as annoying as it can get. Yeah. This is honestly the big Sorry. problem with these sort of movies like this, Ghostbusters 2016, the remake of Charlie's Angels. Mm -hmm. I mean, that this is the annoying thing. The idea of feminism is supposed to be that both genders be treated equal. Not that we suddenly have a reverse of the 1800s and make it so that women are superior to men and everything, or women always be right and all that, but that, unfortunately, is at the very least the sentiment that movies like these oh, give off, so even fear. if it's not the intent. It's so painfully scripted. Of course, the one side that some people might agree with will be portrayed to all its negative values, whereas the side that the director wants to be proven <laughs> right will be shown in a glorious light of that being correct. 
as hey, 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 uh, yeah. It's Black Christmas as written by the creator of Anne of an E. Also, um, <laughs> given that, uh, also given that she's trying to get, also given that she's trying to get people to sign a petition. Let me guess, Chris is one of those rebels who's against the system, but it's just misunderstood. If only uh, people could understand what way. she's fighting for. Let me put it this way. Uh, many people tend to say that watching this movie is like watching a Twitter argument between people. And Chris embodies that the most out of it. Uh, oh, I don't conform yeah. to a white supremacist, a.k.a. anyone who doesn't agree with me. Also, it, I'm uh, not sure this guy uh, is white. Uh, just saying. So basically, so basically the, that college teacher is the equivalent of uh, Kevin Sorbo's character in God's Not Dead. Basically, yeah. <laughs> to give you a basic idea, God's Not Dead does the same thing this by creating a uh, straw man of an atheist professor, by, uh, but in terms of you know being religion hater and, and uh you know like uh, the trope they, they, they turn him into, atheist, the they, they, yeah they, they turn him into this complete uh straw man of a of, of someone who just hates anything that is even remotely religious for, for no wasn't, reason wasn't so. there a god's not dead free release since we yes, there was. Yes, there was. No, oh no, boy okay i'm gonna have to step someday. in pedro and uh, completely cut you off there because university professors are some of the most vindictive assholes you will ever meet in your okay. life. And, and again, they are, and it's not uncommon. Like, people like that teacher, like, I get what you're trying to say about the movie, but Jesus Christ, is a teacher like that incredibly common in the university space? I'm sorry, the, I have and, to oh, no, cut you off with that. Is the other point. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> I mean, that was a stupid joke, but probably didn't warrant, like, that, if, I guess. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> in case you're wondering, if I remember correctly, uh, our protagonist, major protagonist, Riley, uh, was actually raped in the in the past, and she suffers PTSD from it. I think it was... Oh, so he is a was... dick for making that joke, yeah, then. Yeah, I think, I think it was by um, either him or this Brian guy you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And again, Shiri makes it uh, the center's nails the other point, the fact that uh, despite everything, these themes, uh, particularly in university colleges and everything, are still happening, you know, to real people. So the movie has a degree of actually, you know, um, trying to get the message across by talking about uh, stuff that technically is relatable to the audience. Again, the problem is instead how this is conveyed, because I do believe that with this kind of premise, uh, you can get the message perfectly across and also having a fun romp to see how you know this girl manages to overcome you know the status quo that is from her colleges you know um and having fun while we're at it you will see what happens they're gonna miss the mark big time well, again they? that will be for you to see for the time being they had to prepare for a christmas celebration if i could be a theater play that the school is having the college is having so I guess Riley is supposed to be our main protagonist of this version of the story. Yeah, the girl, the girls do have a decently enough equal amount of screen time, but Riley, for intents and purposes, is supposed to be our center of attention. God. I don't get what that was trying to say. Uh, anyway, um, uh, I think when they were talking about the white supremacist, I guess they were talking about Calvin Hawthorne, the, uh, the founder, founder of, of the school. college, which, yeah, leads me to believe that this is essentially just a made-for-movie university. Brian Huntley, President 2015. Let me guess, that's the guy who raped her, isn't it? I think so. Well, I mean, given that his presidency was cut off in two years, that either means he graduated or had to leave and step down for a reason. As mentioned, I don't watch this movie very often, so the more in no, not intricate, but you know, the more detailed parts about the plot is something that I need to be reminded of. 
Now, regardless of what we think of him, when it comes to the Chris Duckman review, from what I've heard, it started out essentially as a regular review, but then devolved into a hilariosity for review. No, he so the... wanted. No, originally he talked about it uh, in the things we talked about. The mostly were the technical ones, which is something that he still did not like. Then waited a couple of months uh, because you know. Unlike uh, the rest of the internet, it was, was widely enough to actually wait around and wait until things calmed down for a bit, and then discussed about the plot, because he knew that if he talked about it, it would have been too much of a shit storm. Oh, no, 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 I get that, but in regards to his actual review, again, from what I've seen on the comments, it's like, he basically starts out being professional, but then the movie gets so bad that the review essentially turns into a hilariosity review. It doesn't have that specific name. Uh, for those who don't know, Stuckman's hilariosity reviews are essentially the reviews where he eventually comes at stuff with more of a much more satirical gaze because the movie is just that bad. Shame he's oh, not doing God. those. Oh, God. Wait, he, he, he outright stopped with those? As soon as he became a director, he, he decided to just decide to stop and doing only specific reviews of movies that come out in a very <laughs> sterile kind of manner. And uh, again, I'll leave it at that. Oh, boy. Oh my god. Uh... Oh, yeah. Sounds like Brian was the one who raped her. Well, you're literally the worst, dude. Again, even you, let me put it also this way clear. Um, you, If you want to make this kind of, you know, uh, strongman, not necessarily strongman because these people people of that kind of personality do exist properly in real life too. Mm -hmm. Again, make it also, make it over the top and snooty, kind of like a Gaston would be for Beauty and the Beast, you know. You still come across with the point that this kind of behavior is not acceptable and, you know, um, this person potentially was in danger of being raped because, you know, she wasn't uh, particularly secure about this uh, uh, sexual encounter, you know. But at least you're also having, you know, fun with the concept. Like, something like a slasher movie, like, especially like the originals, were not necessarily having levity in them, but they were not taking themselves, you know, this kind of dour seriousness. Okay, okay. Look, there's a time and a place to be doing this. That being said, doing it in a horror movie, I'm not saying you can't do that in a horror movie, but... It feels weird. Like, okay, when I think this kind of level of serious tone, I think of it in, like, one of those PSA movies that you play in school, which, to be fair, you get why those are the way they are. Some kids legit do not know better, and an educational movie can be unsubtle, or, you know, can be very much in your face to really much hammer it in your point. There it's fine. This, though, being... Also... Also... Chris uh, is putting uh, Riley on the spotlight uh, for the uh. for the um, for the play that they're having, with the purpose, uh, you know, idea that uh, this play will give them empowerment in order to reject, uh, you know, the um, uh, the man at the college, uh, despite the fact that Riley has this trauma on her and knows that uh, her actual rapist is in the audience uh, and chris uh, decides to still put her there because you know she believes uh, it's for the better also for everyone again it's the same problem that i have uh, with situations like uh, edgeworth in case 24 against adrian with adrian andrews and uh, uh towards the end of uh, the crossover professor in the right the idea of you know um trying to overcome trauma by forcibly confronting it even if the person in question feels insecure about it sure it can work out under circumstances but it honestly leads potentially leads to more damage than anything Ezra Felice has the excuse that there were incredibly dire circumstances and that they needed that woman to talk even though it was legit a matter of life or death this 
Chris is just being a dick here. What happened to you, girl? You used to be cool. Like, gee, it's almost like you suffered some weird trauma that made you a shrinking violet. Oh, wait. Like, that being it, said, uh, you know, trying to, if you, if, trying to getting some positive out of this, uh, you know, I still like the idea of using the stage play to essentially king, sh not king shame, but, you know, properly shame a rapist, uh, you know, on the, on the crowd. Uh, so there is that. Okay, that is legit a sick burn. I'll give him credit. Yeah. And then, like he said, this this movie has a very good skeleton in it. It's just the meat attached to the bone that needed to be better. But again, you'll see. Let me guess. The movie is never going to call out Chris for pretty much accusing Riley um, of fence-sitting, is it? I'm jumping a bit the gun, but uh, the movie is essentially treating her like she's perfectly in the right. Yep, I figured. In case you're wondering about Nate, uh, Nate is basically the, the, not, okay, we'll say token nice guy, but not in a way of the nice guy. I'm talking about, you know, that perfectly normal guy who just sometimes hang around with this and he's perfectly, you know, fine, doesn't have any ill intent or anything. And to give credit, you know, it's not like the girls are treating him like shit or anything, he's just there. And they don't throw in the stereotype that he's the gay best friend to girls? Surprisingly, no, but again, I'll take what I can get. He's not the R slash nice guy. No. That being said... I still feel a bit sorry for him because he's genuinely trying to help them, you know, in general. But I get the idea if he might feel uh, like he doesn't know what's best for everyone. So he's just trying to, you know, the best. Okay, I will say this, though. Problem remake-wise... This feels like it has almost nothing to do with the original movie. Like, I, sure, like yeah, we... Like said, Jova, there's no Billy. The location is far from the house, from the sorority house, from most of them anyway, you know. The only thing that is in common is, is that it's about a group of people, of sorority girls. This reminds me of how... This reminds me of how you mentioned earlier that the director was even dubious about making a Black Christmas movie in the first place, wondering if it should have been original... And yeah, I think that this should have been original. I like, don't get me wrong. Okay, to be fair, the original did have some slight, slight feminist tones and hints, especially with bits like, again, the girl being pressured to have the child by the boy who we were led to believe might be the killer, that turned out not to be. For an abortion, which again, for the 70s, it was a big deal. Um, also worth noting is that, uh, again, I know that it sounds might, might sound obvious, but I want to get it out of the way just for clarity's sake. Mm -hmm. This does not really excuse uh, the the way the quality of the 2006 movie turned out. Just because this is this kind of bad, that doesn't make the 2006 movie good automatically. Just in case of someone might have thought about it, I kept man, I mentioned in the the comic 2006 movie that each of these movies can be described in one word. You know, um, and this one, I guess it's the best word to describe it is provocative. Oh boy. Aren't all the best movies? <sighs> okay, you know, I think I can pro imagine there, there are a few, but I, they're just not coming to my mind very, but I don't want to, uh, you know, judge them all in the category into one. Okay, I guess if I can give this movie one credit, whereas a lot of big companies will say that they're being progressive, but let's be honest, they're just using that supposed progressive nature to get the headlines, get the controversy stirring, and hopefully get the dollar signs of flowing. I guess I can buy that the creators were at least genuine with them trying to be progressive in this movie. 
And keep in, in mind... That in that case, Joel, we run with the same problem that uh, you guys probably ran into The Last of Us 2 with, uh, you know, Neil Druckmann. Uh, it's technically doing more damage to the product, uh, you know, of what should be instead a good message that should actually, you know, inspire people to be better. Also, real nice giving a progressive nature while you're treating your dev team a little better than slaves, Druckmann. Oh, and now we know a little bit more about Druckmann too. It is even worse. <laughs> Yeah. It, you know, I, I, I'm just glad that his plans for that Last of Us Online game fell through. I guess the only I didn't even know about that. I guess the only reason why I don't put him on the same level as David Cage because, as far as we know, he didn't molest anyone. Thankfully, he was just a dickhead boss before the other stuff. Unfortunately, evil comes in many shapes and sizes. Mm hmm. But now oh. she's getting the uh, spooky messages from Mr. Hawthorne's statue. Again, we're in this moment, we're trying to resemble more the concept of the original the story, the house and a potential murder happening there. I do want to point out that not every remake has to be one for one. But that being said, part of the problem with this is, hey, if you were just a fan of the original and wanted a remake of the original, you have every right to be disappointed by this not resembling the original pretty much of at the all. because the messages, Jova, it comes also into the trapping of if you have a potential criticism about it, that clearly means you're against the message, of course. Oh, please tell me they didn't fall to that old trick from Ghostbusters 2016. Days, oh, gee, did that sound was so loud. Yeah, that's ah, another thing. jump scare Again, sounds, another, my favorite. Bloom also loved to put these in a lot of his pro all of his products, unfortunately, and it's uh, it happens also in this one too. Again, to be fair, I think it it depends on creator from creator because to be fair, Jordan Peele is a lot more restrained, and he is also that's because it's mostly about individual creators making decisions. This is instead a product where Bloom has a bit more control behind it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, so we know for sure that more of the decisions were the calls directly of Blue Mouse Productions. Not necessarily so for plot decisions, but I'm talking about the presentation. Okay, uh, I I'm actually curious. Boycotted. Ha! Ah, I'm actually curious. How messed up was the production of this movie? Well, not it, it, we don't know how much it can be because, as you, you guys told, it ramped out to way too quickly for its own good so for all we know everyone was just fine because they had to film in like a month or something like i guess to be fair i'm not seeing any production flaws in the rush nature but to be fair it's black christmas like i don't think you ever really have to have a high budget for it again the highest budget we saw i think was the 2006 one which again was still more more profitable and that one had, I guess, sort of that kind of action scene with the house burning, but other than that, nothing really big in the effects department, so, yeah. Oh, God, let me guess, the frat boys are the bad guys. I mean, Lord knows, they're telegraphing it enough with how evil the fraternity is. I'm guessing Nate is supposed to be the stand-in for that one boyfriend who tends to show up in Black Yoshi. Christmas movies. Uh, like Peter. Kinda, sorta, but not really. He's uh... also more reminiscent to Discount Ryan Gosling uh, that was it for the Alright, as I foreshadowed in 2006 movie, this scene wants to be a parallel to one of the more famous scenes from Exorcist 3. Well, weird thing to take into account, but that okay. Said, it's a it's a good scene, and as such, this you know this uh, homaging to that is also good by nature. This is essentially a track scene, a tracking scene on a single single location, and we see the character moving from room to room from this perspective, and having a sense that something is about to happen, but we don't know when. Oh, honey, if this is anything like the first movie, you are not feeding that cat ever. <laughs> The cat's the murderer. Wait, is this Yeah, he just walked across the middle of the stairs while they were walking down and they toppled up. Hold on, though. It's weird, though. Like, she's staying behind. Usually there that's... Is, uh... Uh... On the right. 
Yeah. Well, shit. Okay, I'm wondering, that girl with the glasses, was she supposed to be the stand-in for, like, the, um, for the sorority caretaker? Because she looks way younger here. Not really. For all we know, she, if I call she was another student like them. Ah, uh, again. You know, this has a similar problem to the 2006 remake in that I don't know most of these girls' characters, and the movie doesn't exactly do much to give me much to care about them. Now, granted... Maybe the first few kills were cannon fodder, and I guess we got to see a bit of Helena. I since... and their friends are going to have fun tonight. Landon? Keep on guessing, sweetheart. Maybe you'll get it right. No color. Also, that ringtone. Well, she's got an iPhone, so we know she's not secretly the villain. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was about that point, wasn't it? Holy we're shit, it's we're, Gaster. We're betting also another homage to the original movie by having, you know, the uh, lecture also call on the phone. Well, at least a tease of that uh, originally. Also, never answer, like, no caller ID. Shira, it's the equivalent of pressing I feel lucky on Google. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about our the, our actresses. Might as well give them justice, you know, for a product like this. Uh, Imogen Putz uh, as Riley. Let me check uh, her demography. I can't really, most of these are fresh blood. They did not do that much until this point. Uh, um, I mean, the oh, acting no. at least isn't bad. Okay, our protagonist was uh, young Valerie in V for Vendetta, that was either her first role, um, and she was in 20 Weeks Later, um, for the 2011 Friday Night, which wasn't really good, but I can imagine her role was not that big, maybe in that. Um, a lot of other movies that I'm not recognizing. Uh, okay, her, her career is pretty, you know, healthy enough, uh, also on TV stage, so good on her. Chris is played by Alacy Shannon. Check. Uh, she was in a series called Charmed. Um, another series called Leverage. She's mostly a TV actress, also on stage this year. Uh, Brittany O'Grady, Jess. She was in not much. Her career is not that much, but it was mostly also on TV. Also, Riley suddenly is sporting a much different hairdo from what I recall her having at the start. Oh, well. Lily Donoghue as Marty. Uh, check. Mm-hmm. Chris. Okay. Chris, uh, okay, yeah. Chris is a dick. Like Again, that's the entire problem with Chris. It's not just a matter of, you know, her ideals. It's essentially her attitude. Even when easy stuff happens, her dismissal just comes across as condescending at best. Like, I get it. She's supposed to be the cool girl who tells people what's what, but she really comes off as a blowhard at best, or just absolutely inconsiderate of other people's feelings at worst, or, God help me, she might legit be as bad as D from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Oh, I think she's dead? Like, yeah, remember, she was killed before with by strangled by the Christmas It's lights. weird, though. They didn't show markings on her neck. That's usually what they do for victims of that. Her neck looks That's surprisingly intact. That's another thing to intact. discuss about this movie uh, separated from this message, because it's a genuine critique on its own, if people noted. Because Blumhouse's tendencies of wanting to attract as much people as possible, a lot of the movies tend to have a PG-13 rating when they come out, and then on Blu-ray they will have a properly R rating. This means... Uh, during production, a lot of scenes which would have gore, you know, in it, would probably be trimmed or completely cut away and would be restated as the actors cut in the Blu-ray. This apparently forgot the memo, because this is essentially the same version that we got in Cinema, and as a result, 
for a slasher movie, this is very tame. Which so, I get it. The 2006 movie went overboard, so maybe you wanted to backtrack a bit on that. <laughs> and I would be glad you're okay with it. But this this doesn't really feel too much. So this like one went the opposite time. direction. Anyway, what I'm at, Landon is played here by Caleb Eberhardt. Um, or Eberhardt, pardon pronunciation. TV, uh, and also a couple of movies, uh, even to this day. Again, the good thing is that this movie did not kill the career of anyone. Everyone's actors or actresses have moved on uh, after this. So there is that. I was in one episode of in Order. By the way, Joe, but since Imogen Poots is from England, um, how do you rate her accent? I guess it's fine. Oh, it's due to student demand. The bust of Calvin Hoffman has been removed from public display. Uh, well, good for them. They got that, that accomplished. Looks like the, that looks like the most depressing sandwich I've ever seen. That looks like expired mayo. What is that? It's the one in those uh, small packages that you get in stuff like McDonald's. So yeah, Riley, concerned obviously about her friend Helena, she wants to report that to the security of the college. Get in, the guard doesn't know about these. <laughs> oh, are we going to have a reference to the original movie which had the killer being tracked via phone? Actually, come to think of it, in the modern day and age, this should be incredibly easy to solve now, given how far technology has come in tracking this sort of stuff. I mean, unless, they're me unless they have like a super hacker on the killer's team who is bouncing the signal around constantly. Well, I mean, she's doing the right thing at least, you know, expressing concerns to the security people. Mm hmm. Problem is, the security people are about as useful as. Well. Security people in movies. I get what the movie is going for, but from the security guard's perspective, he kind of does have a point that anyone could be a suspect. Like, she should really be sus of everyone, like, yeah. involved in, in this. Like, don't get me wrong, Brian is, an, is, from what we've seen, a monster, but again, like, you know... Anyone could be it. Like, for all we know, Landon could be putting on the nice guy act. Yeah, like, the security guard is, you know, a bit shit, but also, like, he is right that, that he, they did just meet. And we he are doesn't really know him. And we are saying right now, he did come out all this way, too, so it's not even like he completely turned his nose up at her. And it's gone a lot further than a lot of these instances go in, like, movies and such. Like, I just get the feeling that we're supposed to see him as terrible, but... Once again, I feel like the movie doesn't realize what it's doing. I mean, if... Okay, I'll give it one thing. For being filmed in July in New Zealand, um, they do a good job at making it look like it's winter in the US. Oh, that must be fake snow they're using. That, or they got it into one of the colder regions of New Zealand? I so, don't know exactly. Oh, oh, are we gonna get the old mods to the original with the killer in the rocking chair? Uh, Mr. University Professor, why are you grabbing your students? 
Admittedly, as far as he knows, she's peeping in on property that's not her own, so that might be a bit uh, concerning. Anything wrong with saying excuse me? Fair enough. Video? Video? Oh, god damn it, Chris. She didn't. Damn. You are... This Chris... Chris is a really shitty friend, isn't she? Like, okay. It's, what did she do? Apparently she put a video of their performance online without Riley's knowledge. Oh, that's... Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Look, it's one thing to talk Riley into doing it. I still did not agree with that, but putting up a video of something that she wasn't comfortable in the get-go online without even telling her. Hmm, that's, uh... That's grade-A crap friend material there. And yet we're... Mm -hmm. And yet we're... Mm -hmm. And yet we're apparently supposed to like Chris. Creepy. My planet needs me. Okay, either they're setting this guy up to be like a red herring, or they are really telegraphing the evil vibes with him. A second, I thought he left his key in the door. <laughs> All right, so it's rather going to, so it's rather going to confront the shitty friend. <laughs> It's really annoying that, like, anybody in the audience could have done that because it was, like, a, 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 a kind of school event, so, like, anybody could have posted the video. But it's just, like, so off that they had one of the... They wrote it so one of the friends did it. I don't... Oh, my God, I think it's now... What? Oh, <laughs> if I recall correctly, you're about to get to the worst scene in the entire movie. Really? That's uh, yeah. saying something, because this I'm movie is... I'm not saying is... that it improves, uh, that the movie improves mm. this in the proper release, but uh, this is the season, early season 2 Cora moment, let's just say that. Oh, Maybe no. the guy drinking in the corner has the right idea. <laughs> that is stupid and so are you. Mind you, this is time okay. to foreshadow a bit the entire metaphor of uh, animal symbology, as in... Uh, Working ends up working together, you know, in unison. Chris. <laughs> Please take me with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. It already has 50,000 views. Does Chris have, like, a huge online following? You literally exposed your friend who has PTSD from raping. Yeah. I mean, the sad thing is, I don't think this is the point the movie agrees with, but no, yes. The movie is telling that Chris is right because the point is trying to overcome this for the sake of getting the message across and guaranteeing a better future for everyone. You know, that's really the, is be the end. You know, that's really the sad thing, though. The movie actually had a good point there. But it's going to ignore it in the fact that, yes, there is a line between inspiring people or just trying to piss people off, essentially. Like, like you knew her abuser was in the audience. And again... She, literally, she was the one that actually uh, practically forced Riley to be on stage despite that. Yeah, Chris sucks, actually, you're right. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm totally gonna hang out in this totally not creepy room all alone, and certainly nothing will happen to me, like, I get Again, it. the antic, uh, wanting, wanting to be cheeky and referencing past movie. Oh my god. And again, like, here's the thing, though. It does get to a point where you're just 
fighting and not actually saying anything. Again, look at Ghostbusters 2016. That could have just been a funny movie in and on its own, but no. He's trying to it... make it about the petition. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like what the Mark Millar was trying to say on at the end of uh, the Civil War comic event by having... I think she was. It was called Lang's daughter saying to Cap Captain America, "Oh, we're not even any more fighting for the people. We're just fighting." She was basically yeah, saying, so "I'd rather team. fight crime than fight each other and go to jail." Essentially, if you're wondering, no, she doesn't die by being electrocuted. Don't worry. But uh, yeah, no, like a real big problem with again projects like this or again supposed feminist piece like uh, the uh, Charlie's Angels reboot is that, again, they could have just been films and media on their own. Arr! But the again, problem no, is... No, it's a side I, I, I kind of liked the way the shot was composed. But the problem is that they... Oh boy, here we go. Here we go. Guys, you're not ready for this you don't know a movie. Trust me. Wow! What does so that, that mean? It's about, it's about to eh? get worse. Eh? Oh, Jesus, is messy. Okay. So, why is he on the wrong for saying not all men are rapists? Like, I get that he may have been a bit out of line with some stuff here, but suddenly they all turned on him because... He said not all men. Wow. And, yeah, that conveniently allows us to stop actually, you know, confronting Chris about what she did. Like, wow, it, you know, it's like the movie itself knew that Chris was on the losing end of that argument, so of course they have the man then put his foot in his mouth so that now they all turn on him. Yeah, what? they really took the spotlight out of Chris when she deserves a verbal lashing herself, like, Jesus Christ. It, it's like I was saying earlier. Oh, um, Jesus. The f Again, this movie is obsessed with loud noises for jump scares. Wow! Oh, no, it's Hawkeye. Oh, yeah, yeah. The tone in this movie is horrific. It's, um, Wait, is the killer it's, legit it's going so after them with a bow and arrow? I mean, props for creativity, but why? It's Hawkeye's evil twin brother. Ronan? Yeah, Ronan yeah, was a pseudonym that he took. Drove <laughs> That's the joke be, to you. I, mean, I guess it would be when Bullseye was impersonating <laughs> him in the Dark Avengers. Again, to you. That's the joke. But no, like I was trying to say earlier, the problem again with movies like this, the Charlie's Angels reboot, Ghostbusters 2016, is, oh, they say about how, you know, we just want to be this proper film, but then no, they have to make it a fight, because then anyone who says... I didn't like this movie is suddenly labeled as a racist or a sexist or bigoted. It's like they turn these movies into crusades like wars on bigotry when they really are not that. Ghostbusters 2016 was essentially a comedy piece. Yes, it was, you could argue, it was going for female empowerment. But it wasn't going to be like this big, bold speech that was truly going to tell everyone this. And they focused so much on making it that, rather than actually making it an entertaining piece. And the story with the Charles Lee's Angels reboot pretty much speaks for itself. Elizabeth Banks said, Alright, you bigoted men who don't like this movie, don't come and see it. Um... And it's funny because more, more women saw the the Rambo Last Blood movie that year than came to see the Charlie's Angels I thought reboot. it was the Sonic movie. Charlie's Angels did not come out the same year as Sonic, from what was I... Was it? Pretty sure Sonic was like 2020. The Charlie's... Early 2020, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, then. The Charlie's Angels reboot, I'm pretty sure that was 2019. Yep. Yeah. But, yeah, no, this movie is really annoying. Like, you know what this movie feels like? This feels like somebody who goes onto the internet to make all these statements and everything, but then the minute that their argument starts to get countered, they suddenly block whoever is, you know, countering it so that they can eventually put themselves in an echo chamber. Because the thing about this movie is, there are so many times when it is actually close to realizing its own problems, but then it either cuts the argument short or creates a new one so that people can suddenly go, oh, no, these characters aren't wrong. Again, like Shuri pointed out, they took the spotlight off of Chris when she really deserved it all just because of a man saying not all men are rapists and, like, I'm sorry, is that, like, a wrong statement? Like, and he does have a point that, unfortunately, it does sometimes translate into people going that all men are pigs or all men are terrible, which, again, is counterintuitive to actually the message of equality in that regard. It's that like, whole scene was such a mess. Like, yeah. it, it's a lot to unpack, it's like, actually. Yeah. It's like it's like Chris Duckman said, it, was, it wasn't even really dialogue. It was just like someone took a Twitter argument and slightly adapted it for a movie. And the thing is, this could maybe have worked if the movie called out all this stuff. Like, that's the thing. Some of this stuff, the gaslighting and everything is very real. The problem is, the movie doesn't acknowledge all the gaslighting. And it just feels very self-entitled in that regard. It's just so full of itself. About what Jova said, though, if I may. Go on. Um, Go on. The context for this movie lacks a lot of nuance because the context for certain words and phrases um, does actually apply. Like, for example, the not all men thing. Like, in this context, I feel like it's very misused because when people say that, it's when specific discussions are happening. Like, for example, when we're talking about um, assault and um, you have... Um, random guys in the replies who are like, but not all men do this. And it's like, yeah, we know that, but that's not what's being discussed here. Nobody said all men do this. So it's... it's mm, yes, Trevor, sorry? Would you say it's like the equivalent of when people quote all lives matter in the face of yes, black lives matter? Yes, that's exactly matter? what it is. Yes. Yeah. Okay, understandable. And... Never good. It's like this stuff can apply to situations, but this movie, as I, as I guessed earlier, is missing the mark on a lot of things, actually. But yes, it is in the same vein as the people who chant All Lives Matter. I guess the problem... So, yeah, not much like with the original, the movie will try to give a bit of ambiguity at this, the boyfriend... Maybe he's like Peter, and maybe he's the real killer, and is being you know changing costumes to, um, you know, just lie to these people. You'll see where the, where this is going. I mean, he's got a point. We should really get out of here. Okay, that, uh, that was actually funny. What, what this is fuck? a man's... What was he about to say? This is a man's weapon? I don't know. Also, this is a man's um, fight or whatever? Like, uh, I don't know. Also, was that like, you know, the movie's way of saying, take that, sexist! You were saying this is a man's... Also, of course this guy could easily kill her, but he's just toying with her. So... So, so Nate's dead, I guess. Mm-hmm. What was even the point? So let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. You had him get into an argument, which the movie pretty much scripted him to lose, only for him to come back, and he legit did try to help, but then he says this is a man's and then he dies? Like, was this the movie's way of saying, oh, you were sexist, so you got what you deserved? Yep, yeah, the creepy Santa got into the equation, Drover. 
Woo! How wonderful! And again, I I will say I, I at least I will say that this scene actually is trying to get the message more coming across the idea that the killer is actually replicating uh, uh, our protagonist fear when she was assaulted, but she eventually manages to get the better of him. Like he said, this movie has a actually a structure that can actually make it work, and in moments like this, it actually manages to shine through in what it could have been. There's more killers, aren't there? Either that or the killer is still alive. There's way too much time left in the movie. No, 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 Chris does not get off that easily for all this crap. You forgot he was her boyfriend. Should have known one of them was going to die after a moment they just had. It's just, it feels so sloppy, honestly. Like, so it feels... let's take under the mask and see who's behind this. Uh... According to the subtitles, there's footsteps coming. <laughs> well, I was right, there are more of them. And let me guess, it's the fraternity. Because again, you know, I just realized this movie is actually kind of short. Which... I guess, to be fair, the other movies weren't particularly wrong, but the pacing in this feels... Is... Yeah, at the very least, the pacing doesn't mix it a lot to go through. Maybe uh, it's the teachers. Honestly, I was actually going to say that the pacing is very off. Like, we spend a lot of time with this killer, and then the last few kills kind of happen relatively close to each other. Well. Oh. Well, I guess you can join your boyfriend in death. Wasn't this, like, I might have been missing something, but, like, wasn't that the same boyfriend who was, like, not listening to her, um, uh, apprehension when they were in the bedroom before? No, 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 no. no, no, Was that a different, was that a different couple? Different different guy, different guy. Nate's actually supposed to be... The boyfriends look kind of similar, but, but, yeah. (laughs) Like, okay, like, (laughs) Nate's a... Well, I thought he was supposed to be one of the better boys until we had that scripted argument. Because, again, no. I pin that entirely on the script. I don't believe that that's in character for what little character we've seen of the boy. Like, he's mostly just been chill in the background, like, having a drink or something. Oh, no, they're hunted by velociraptors. Seriously. So it's just... Or how, the... helping them with their photos and stuff. So it's like, yeah, he's been pretty chill, actually. Wait. Hold on. Helen is still alive, despite being pretty much gutted was by an axe. in the gut, the drover. You can survive that. Uh, yeah, I get the that. Loss, uh. Yeah, I get that, but that just feels contrived that the... Hello, hello. That the mask guy doesn't... You know, finish her off unless well, they. Well, he hasn't uh, until this point. Uh. Like so. Ah, oh, the security's coming. Someone doing their job. Wow. Well, again, to give the security guy credit, as far as we've seen in this movie, he has done his job. Well, he had a bad tasting sandwich, Rover. Oh no! Oh, that, means, that, that, that means that means he's dead to me. <laughs> So it's essentially you can you can be the you can be the best in the world at your job, but if you have shit tasting food, that's it. I mean, I will judge you if you like pineapple on pizza, but that's that. I'm judging you too. Like take <laughs> take um take Pedro for example. He could be the best waiter in the world, but if he's but if he serves me um, vegetarian lasagna, even if I ask for beef, um, that's it. I'm done. So here's my what question: about, What are you talking? What are you talking about, Twips? Boom. Clearly, that's the that's your problem. Of uh, course. Like, <laughs> but I uh, said but, beef. But, but, since when is the, does the customer decide what he wants? So here's my <laughs> question: really You're the problem. So here's my the customer question. is always right, don't you know? So here's my question: These masked guys have been killing pretty much every other girl they've gone up against. So in that case, she even kills steals. Ah, <laughs> uh, Chris really is just the worst. Mm-hmm. But well, I mean, no, to I... be fair, um, he was trying to kill both of them. 
Oh, okay, Gavon, okay, got the wrong house. And the security guard is dead. Seriously, when is the FBI going to intervene Wait. with all this mass murdering? And what what is what is even going on at this point in this movie? Yeah, it's a dark substance. Maybe these were orcs. I don't know. <laughs> Wait. Let's see who's behind this mask. Can we finally? Old man Jenkins. Wait, who's that? <laughs> Um, oh, he was at, uh... Mm-hmm. During the, the meeting that she spied upon. Let me guess, some initiation. Wait, oh Again, my god. It, it's like what you said, Jova, this movie telegraphs a bit too much. So, the fraternity bros were essentially pulling a scream, and they are the mysterious cloaked killers! Why? That was not the point of the original you, Black Christmas. No, the original was just... Okay, to be fair, as you yourself said, Billy in the original might have lacked a motivation. It was just a bit too kooky crazy. And uh, instead, in the 2006 movie, it was uh, aggressively overly edgy by having him traumas after trauma in his past like in his life. Uh, so I can understand uh, trying to do something different in this case. And who's under this mask? They have these things on tight. Essentially, Chris was trying to get back the keys because they were the ones that uh, our protagonist stabbed the guy with. <gasps> but that blood's coming for that black stuff's coming from that statue that they had removed from the um, main area. Wait. Get it? Like in the 2006 movie. So or let me get... Original, like the technique that uh, Billy used to have. So let me are get... we actually going to know who these are? Again, uh, it seems like these are fraternity bros from that DK. We will see the war, guys. That said, so let me get this straight. All these other kills, these guys have pulled off successfully, but this one-two team of girls is... Suddenly too much for, again, the whole squad, except for that one guy who apparently killed the security guard. Yeah. Quickly, before Dark Hawkeye kills you. Before he very slowly loads the arrow. Yeah, so you uh, the, why didn't you shoot the tire? He was at point blank. Yeah, <laughs> just also, shoot the here's, tires! Here's for, another, here's for another bad scene, but just how he's composed. Now we're literally summing up what literally just happened because the movie thinks the audience is too stupid to understand. No, they the are not shot composition. <laughs> I, I can't believe this might have been a mandate from Universal to say the audience might be sleepy at this point. We need a recap. Wait, are they <laughs> suggesting that there's a supernatural element in that black liquid? Again, Jova, we will see, and I need to. I'll need to talk about uh, what the. Um, the ending of the movie is in my final thoughts. So just roll with it for now. Well, this movie certainly is rolling downhill in quality. Jesus. Uh, Dave, so who's that wrestler that has the, the theming says keep rolling? Um, the Undertaker. Okay, then. Yeah, the, the the Donkey Kong crew is the responsible. Yeah, Donkey Kong, um, orang. What what's the word for group that begins with O? Organization. Operative. Operatives. Yeah, Donkey Kong operatives. Okay, I, ca these, I can't this believe position is poor as fuck. I can't believe. I am saying this, but I might be siding with Chris for once that we need to get the heck out of Dodge. The problem is that she suggested to go to, to the police in the first place. That is a point, so the which the movie kinda, seems the to have forgotten. On that. The thing is, even if you don't go to the police, at least, like, just don't go back. Just keep going. Really, Riley? You want her to pull the... <sighs> this feels God, like... You suck. This feels like a contrivance to make Chris seem better than she actually is. Again, like, you know what this is like? This and is now, like. Now, 
Riley is just pressing her own psychology because she wants her to go to confront the fraternity. Even Wait though a minute. Chris actually had a better idea. Wait a minute. Is the movie suggesting... No, that wouldn't make any sense. Well. I was wondering, like, she mentions that the Black Liquid might be possessing them, and we saw that she got Black Liquid on herself, so... I was wondering if the movie was going to suggest that she's doing this stupid decision because the Black Liquid no. is doing uh, it. In the, in the words of, of uh, Deadpool, or maybe that could just be bad writing. Uh, and she passes by him because... Uh, look, I get it. You know, traumatized and everything. You need to catch up a bit. I can understand this, how this scene is constructed. Why would she, he? She's in a condition of tr not trusting anyone at this point. Again, yeah, like she's said, completely lost it. The way it. the movie has been going with the murdering, quick murdering, quick succession, and, you know, the emotional trauma, I can understand her areas only like that. So... Again, I want to try to give this movie any possibility that it can. I can get where the movie is going with that, but I also will say that the execution of it has been pretty terrible. Wait, hold on. So I guess that guy killed everyone else in the house and they've yeah. evaded him all that time? So for Glimpse is the Light, we also have a couple of off-screen deaths. So. Oh, Ooh. lovely. <laughs> That's the thing. Round here, this film was given a 15 rating, and yet, um, so There's far... gore or swearing, for that matter. Okay, I'll yeah, just... it's really, it's really tame. Okay, we've talked about how this movie is it giving the message, and now it sucks. We've talked about how this movie is it being a remake, and how much it sucks, but... Heck, as a horror film in general, this movie sucks. Even well, um, would it interest you to know, Jova, that apparently the director even flat out said that the whole point was to put the message before the movie? I mean, okay. that explains Somebody a lot, but... I started to understand who might have had some of the writing decisions. That explains a lot, but that just adds to the problem here. You're making a horror movie, like... <sighs> yeah, that costs a lot. I get being mad, but do you think maybe alerting your presence is not the best idea in these circumstances? I guess it's to show he really truly is on her side. God. You really didn't think this through, did a... you? He dressed like those people at a hot fuzz. Yeah. It's all for he was going to say, it's like they're in a cult. <laughs> it's all for the greater good, dude. Well, it is a, well, it is a cult, Shiori. You'll we'll see if the greater good. Is this movie we'll turning see. into we'll a see flipping... soon enough, guys. Uh, you'll see. Is this movie turning into a flipping comedy? Uh, there's not much uh, fun or joy to be had here. Jordan. So it's turning into a bad comedy, because this feels like something that should be played for laughs rather than serious. That does mean that happened before, that ringing, uh, buzzing feeling. They hypnotized him? Wait, drawing out your true alpha? Oh, what the no. Fuck? Please, movie, don't go there. We're about to get to the big reveal of the movie. Although, like I said, this has been telegraphed almost since the beginning, admittedly. They had the bust that was forced to be moved after the which, petition that which Chris made. The black liquid. <laughs> Wait, so it's actual magic? Oh, she's in on it. Well. Well, shit. Yeah. Alright, like you said, we're about to get the reveal. Now we're going to sacrifice her. I can it's, Again, Shiro, it's all about the greater good. With black goop. 
it's the generic black goop of uh, you know of bad things like the like the substance that compel that uh, creates the undead uh, in death stranding oh my god the black wicked actually is brainwashing them isn't it what the hell is this black Hold Chris on, Jova, please it's stupid i'll isn't say it? that for now <laughs> Rhythmic thumping. <laughs> Sounds like a cheap Bond movie. And uh, who's also accompanying the fraternity? The fraternity? <laughs> yes, sir. It's Carrie Elwes. Oh no! The obvious evil English bad guy is obvious English evil bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> And we're about to get our explanation. This ought to be good. Oh, oh my god, Hold no! On. <laughs> so this is all Chris's fault. Good to know. Also, it was the teacher. What the? If you forgot at the beginning, the professor was actually te mentioning that he might have gone through black magic. Just want to point out, this only happened because Chris got the statue removed and that apparently allowed them to find about, <laughs> about the magic in the statue. <laughs> okay, I refer to what I said earlier. What the hell is this? <laughs> Like, Black Christmas was many things, but a supernatural thriller, it was not. And yet, I kinda like this. As a, so as the on ultimate twist. I mean... Like, if anything, again, if the movie had been more over the top, this would have been the perfect natural conclusion to it. Like you said, Jova, it's kinda similar to what happens in Scream. It's... All they need to do is paste a, it's a man's world over this. So yeah, that magical goop gives you special powers. I will say this though. And brainwashes you. The fact that most boys are doing this while brainwashed, doesn't that kind of take away from the idea that they're all sexist? Since they were brainwashed most of the time? It, won't, it might be a good message in saying Jova that, uh, you know, despite people who naturally will do this, uh, like for example a professor, um, others, uh, you know, might be just, you know, drafted in into being extremist. I think that would be a good message they're going like, for. There, there if... are ways to make these these actually having facets about making the message working, you know, that's what I mean. And why is Helen in on this? I don't see any black markings on her. No, I honestly don't remember why she's in on this. So. So again, so she's basically subservient to them because she believes she's one of whenever one of those straw men, as in uh, what uh, you know people on Twitter believes uh, non-feminist uh, you know girls uh, might be, as in completely subservient to you know to men uh, and wanted to essentially stay in the kitchen, which is again another straw man of ridiculousness. Oh God, it is. It really is. Traitor. Still, if I recall correctly, wasn't Helena supposedly the one... me we can rule the galaxy, the galaxy together. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry, Jova, go on. If I recall correctly, wasn't, uh... Wasn't, uh... Helena supposedly the girl who got gutted by the axe? Or wait, no, 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 she was... It was another character, away. Jova. That was Jess, I think. Oh, wait, no. I don't know. Again, Jova, don't, don't worry about that. This feels like it's a scene that you'd have in one of those um, parody movies. Like, the, you like know, you said, there's something that, like, Scream would have, uh, you know. Wait, so who's the king? Uh, uh what's the name? Triple H? I mean, I thought Carrie always was supposed to be like the king of his sorority, but is there like 
Oh, I forgot if it's still him or, you know, someone else. Uh, and he just put on the mask just because. Uh. <laughs> oh, no, it's not him. Okay. Eh? Yeah, and only now she's she's having a change of heart or something? It's not so much that she's having a change Ooh. of heart. It's just like... I did everything I was supposed to. Oh no, I've been betrayed by the sexist Fuck fraternity off. who was killing women. You're no longer useful to me. Basically, they're trying to do that just in case these were not evil enough. Like, I'm sorry, killing her makes no sense. One, she supports your movement. Two, she is a girl, so doesn't she technically have, like, the inner spy capability of luring other girls to your cause? And free, like I said before, what decides whether or not they kill certain girls or not? Wait, really? It was that easy? Barely an inconvenience. They literally kept her unaccompanied. <laughs> you know, I think had the movie not been so dead serious with all the uh, message stuff earlier, this wouldn't be as jarring as it is. But it's just, the supernatural elements literally come within the last 30 or 20 minutes of this movie. It's kind of insane. Hold on. Fuck uh. off. <laughs> yeah, I am, I'm, I'm kind of reminding me of that shot in Avengers Endgame where they pan over to all the female characters in the movie. Like, see, look at that, we're so progressive, guys. And like, come on, guys. So they're really trying to turn this into an epic hero tale in the last bit of this horror movie. What? Also, someone is beating someone else with a, with a Menara. I don't even know what to say about that. <laughs> well, um... You know, I feel sorry for black Christmas fans of either of the first two movies. Like, at least those first two movies felt like... Well, okay, obviously the first one was because it is the first, but at least the 2006 remake felt like it was trying to be black Christmas. This is just insanity and oh yeah mirroring Again, that she's also, subtle she's also overcome no no like he said this kind of paralleling her overcoming her trauma by relieving a situation similar to that i can understand that you know having the movie do this kind of thing and having the you know her becoming better as a result by you know repelling uh, literally her trauma in a better executed movie i probably would have seen this as the culmination of that but in this movie, it just feels so over the top and on the nose. <gasps> oh no! Chris! What will we do without Chris, everyone's favorite character? And that gives her the power. Yeah, I also say the music has been borderline non-existent. Not necessarily bad, but at best ambient. Smash no. the stone! Smash the patriarchy. Seriously, nobody fought- Break the kiss! <laughs> With the slow motion fighting in the background. Hey, uh, my dude, maybe you should tell your men to fall back, maybe, to try and convince her not to smash the stone? And it- Seriously. Also, you're telling me that they, in all this time, they never bothered to replicate the formula of that liquid? So, uh, yeah, also by- by yeah. breaking the statue, it breaks the power. This is important, guys. Everyone who was under the sigil was under my control. Uh... And now Chris decides to put all of them to roast. That is... I thought they were just going to turn to dust on their own, to be fair. But... <laughs> yeah. No, no. Again, this is important to note. The movie bothered to showcase the fact that, aside from, you know, the dickhead that just hit our protagonist and the... Carrie Elwes' character, the ones that were branded with the black blood um, were under my control, and now they snap out of it. And now but she's now setting them on fire. But because of Chris's action now, which she still did deliberately now, no. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah, the movie, right at the last second, bothers to pat Chris on the back. 
Okay. Yeah, in spite, and, of, no. in spite of her releasing that no. video without yeah. her and, knowledge. And all of, and there you go. All of the people who were mind control and everything aside of Landon because I guess he's the only nice guy gets to get cremated like that. Wait, sure, really? You can you can have the benefit of without and say that a, a percentage of them of any kind chose voluntarily to be branded desiring the empowerment, you know, for the sexism purpose. But they don't know that. You know, at the very least, bring the ones they need to do to justice to the police or right or something like that. Like something else, other than we know you're not under mind control, we're gonna burn you to death. And you know what this means? They probably have killed more people than the actual bad guys of this movie killed. And we should feel proud about it. Like, I mean, look to at be it. fair, if they didn't stop them, they'd probably just keep killing. Yeah, so. I'd say, like, like I'd, say, say, I, um, sorry, I'd say, I'd say girl was, power, but I'd be an insult to the Spice Girls. It was not a problem to to destroy the threat of destroying the buster. It To me, it's more the fact that, you know, killing them right after it. If the movie bothered to say that the destroying the buster did not remove the, the, the bind control, I think they're perfectly justified in doing this, but no. I keep in mind, Shiroi, we know that most of the boys were under brainwashing black liquid goop magic, so technically, as far as we know, the innocent oh, got burned. Oh, and by the way, Jovan, that's how we end the movie. What? Oh. Yep, that's... the movie just stopped. Is there a credit sequence? <laughs> uh, no. There you go, no post credit scene, so these oh. people will not be invited to the Dark Universe edition. Great, a reprisal of the Frat House song. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yay. I mean, don't get me wrong. That was a cool kick-ass moment, but now in the context of this, it's like, congrats, you killed innocent boys and men. Are you proud All of right. yourself? This is, um, as you can imagine, and also you folks in the audience might have guessed, that this is uh, quite the mess. Uh, so let's try to give a bit of order into this. Uh, who wants to start the final thoughts? I'll, I'll go first, just to get done with that was a film where basically, um, what's the terminology for good intentions? Hell. Hell's floor is paved with good intentions. Exactly. Um, okay. Get what the movie is trying to say. You know, rape is bad, and so we should try and, um, do something about it. But I'm not sure that's supposed to mean burn everyone in a building. Or, um... Actually, I don't even know what the film was trying to do. Okay, let's talk about just the um, the filmmaking first. It's one of the most tepid so-called slasher films I've ever seen. There's no blood. You know, the, the language is you know, really... I don't even know why you even rated this 15, you know, to be honest. It's, it's really tepid. You know, Dribs, that's actually a good point. There's even legit a line where the characters say, Wait, it's not blood, it's black liquid. And at the very end, Chris was even trying to say, suck my, I guess, clip, but, uh, you know, the movie cut but, off before that. Yeah, but, oh god, it's like Battleship. <laughs> again, again, it really feels like this, uh, this was the version that got in theater, and I get the idea, it was, there was supposed to be an R-rated cut, and before anyone even dares to try to suggest, no, if Universal <laughs> gets to release that, we're not doing a generation of this. Fuck that. As no. tempting as that may be. Chova, shut up. No, I don't want to see that middle scene of this movie again, to be quite no, honest I mean, with you. I mean, I mean, they'll probably release a Black Christmas in like a few years from now anyway, so... Oh, by the way, Tio, um, the girl who got uh, hit with the axe is actually called Marty. Okay, yeah, we thought yeah. Marty was a guy, but that was actually the girl. My, oh, my bad. Uh, also, Dweebs, you yourself mm -hmm. said this when we commented on the 2006 movie. This killed, once again, the horror Christmas you sub-genre know, sub right after Krampus had tried to bring it back. So what chance do we have? Um, maybe the secret is to make a good Black Christmas movie. I mean, we haven't had one yet. Okay. Yeah, but, uh, hey. <laughs> Remind me. Actually, that another question, Dwebs. Um, hmm? Out of all of these three movies, which one do you prefer and why? Um, well, I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't really like I didn't really like any of the three that much for different reasons, but I'd say by default the best one was the first one. Mm -hmm. Okay then. Because I think it handled because because I mean I think it handled its its message well. All right then. Well 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 well, well by nineteen seventy standards anyway. Obviously. 
the 2006 film. Bleh. And as we and as we learned, uh, it might have had good intention at the beginning, but was sadly sabotaged by the Weinstein's. Uh... Yeah, it fell Yikes. apart. And 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 this and this movie, again, good intentions, but um, but yeah, getting back to the filmmaking, yeah, it's really tepid. The um, the jump scares in this movie, I, I, I thought, I thought, oh, I thought bad horror movies overdoing jump scares died years before this, but no, apparently they're still alive and kicking. They brought Great. it back with this. Yeah, the the scares are non-existence. Like the most scary thing we get is from the composers when they do that loud chime. They literally had to resort. Happens. They literally had to resort to a sound-only jump scare when Helena closes the door, which I guess was supposed to be our sign that she wasn't really dead. But well, considering Dwayne, you normally don't like uh, uh, Atticus Ross and uh, um, Trent Reznor. Um, in this course, seems really similar to their usual stuff. I'm guessing it's a similar case. No. Okay then. Well, but for the plain and simple, I mean, this score, this movie score is just boring. Ros, Reznor and Ross's scores, although albeit with a couple of exceptions in their most recent efforts, to be fair, um, outright hurt my ears. Okay then. Um. Okay. So, and and also, yeah, the directing is really plain and um. And wow, I, yeah. Again, I can. Can you guys tell this film might have been a bit rushed out the door? Just a tad. I mean, I guess to give it credit, not in the usual ways you can tell rushing, like bad production values. But to be fair, this movie was made uber on the cheap. But I guess the weird thing is, for the most part, the cuts and editing seem fine. It's just really the script that feels terrible. Which, to be fair, in that regard. Yeah, if the script was rushed through without anyone taking a second look at it and uh, saying, Hey, this obviously stupid stuff is stupid, let's change it. Yeah, I can definitely get how it was rushed. Okay, they probably, had, they probably, probably had, like, no time. And also, oh, the, the, the dialogue. I mean, there's, there's plenty of examples to pick apart, mainly concerning Chris and the, um, and the, Twitter, and the Twitter argument. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the dialogue in this movie reads like someone on Twitter tried to make a film. And I, I don't mean like someone who just randomly browses Twitter. I mean someone who just lives their whole lives on Twitter and think that's how people talk in real life. Like, to paraphrase in the movie, while not all Twitter folk are like that, Twitter has garnered that reputation for a reason. Hell, oh, I'm surprised... Nice. Yeah. I'm surprised um I'm surprised none of the dialogue in this movie was preceded by someone saying hashtag. I, I can't I can't believe it. maybe it was at some point in the script that Chris would have made a joke and say, you know, uh made, made a joke about, you know, Iron Like I thought I like but... I thought Chris was gonna say hashtag suck my and and you know, go from there. Something like that, because the tone would fit with what the rest of the movie goes for. How sad is I mean it? I, I mean, to be fair, um, okay, in terms of positives, I think the acting is um, really good. I mean, I'll give Chris's actress credit. The character is the character is a horrible bitch, and um, she plays said horrible bitch to the letter. Does it really well? And um, Imogen Poots, from from what I've heard of her career, she really needs to fire her agent. The stuff like this, and from what I've heard, a long way down. I from a that, few but... years, from a few years ago, um, seriously, the, the poor woman is a better agent. Um, now, um, as for what the film is trying to convey, yes, I I totally get it. But the problem is, it's delivered by a bunch of really rude people, and Riley. Um, again, Riley. Okay, it's nice that the central character is the most likable one of the bunch because. Well, but it's, it's 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 the easiest cause to sympathise with, you know. She's a rape victim, and then she does, and she and throughout the movie she overcomes that. I don't think it was depicted all that well in the script, but um, I get what they were going for. But again, that the main the main problem is that the rest of the characters are either boring or Chris. 
I mean, yeah, she's, she's 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 horrible to everybody. She's horrible to her, she's horrible to um she's horrible to people. Um, you know, to, she's you know, forcing forcing her stuff down everybody's throats. Uh, she's horrible to her own friends, especially Riley, with the, by putting that video out without her consent. And again, that's, he, he that's was... like that's like that that, that that that'd be pretty much like uh, going out into the street and yelling. She was, yeah, I'm surprised. It'd be like if pre Twitter, she went out into the street with a megaphone and said that out loud to people. Um, as for um, and um, the villains, they're about as I mean, they're not even really people. They're just caricatures, especially Professor McEvil, British person. They yep. literally have a supernatural, magical I... ritual to control men and women as they and... should be. I and, and the exposition, and, and the and the and the old Bond film exposition thing where the villain reveals this the whole diabolical plan to a tied up hero. <laughs> Like uh, uh, what Donald and Goofy said in the Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories manga to Marluxia, maybe he just like to listen to himself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, so, so there's Professor McEvil face and the cult of dickheads. Well, again, that's a okay. That's that's also a problem. Aside from the guy who committed the rape, um, we're not sure. How many of those um, frat boys were either, you know, legit dickheads themselves or got hypnotized by that black goop? There was the which one mean... guy which was uh, uh, caught while having sex at the beginning, which might have given the idea of being, at the very least, an asshole and potentially also rapist on his own, but, uh, you know, still with a bit of a question mark and potentially just being ruled. But uh, by the end of the movie, we don't even know what yeah, happened. We, we don't even know about the... We don't even know about the rest of them, whether they were whether they're legit like that, or whether it was the goo controlling them. I mean, and then they all get killed at the end. It's... And we should feel proud of that. It's like uh, no. I mean, like... I mean, yeah, that's the thing though. For for the characters constantly saying, Yeah, we should go to the police and say, actually you know what? No. Um I mean again, you had good intentions, but Christ, the, the wonder of the film just the wonder of the film just stopped. They couldn't really because otherwise they'd end up having to write the bit where all the main characters get arrested for committing <laughs> yeah. um, arson and mass murder. Honestly, it just feels way too mean-spirited overall. And it's like Tia said, hey, the police, well, security actually were doing their job. It, yeah, it's... the security guard was, sure, it was a bit bumbling at first with the whole mess. Uh, you know, DM kind of thing, but he showed that he wanted to do his job and then got unceremonially killed for it. Hell, same with Nate! Like, we had that stupid Twitter argument where, again, he was made to be the spotlight, but he did come back, he legit tried to help, but he gets killed for it. It's almost like the movie saying, you were sexist and you deserve to die, because his last lines are literally, this is a man's poop dead. Dot, dot, dot. Like, um, yeah, I, I mean, okay, Okay, yes, there are some really bad sexist and racist and, and whatever else is um, people out there. But um, but there are many solutions to that, you know, education, or if they committed a really heinous crime prison. You know, ironically, I don't I've... think I don't think having them I don't think having them die in a burning building is the is the answer. I you think to others, it's as simple as that. You know the sad thing? I feel like Chris burning all those guys, just assuming that they're all bad, is the perfect allegory for the problem with these kind of arguments. Assuming that legit everyone in a certain sect, gender, religion, sexuality, or whatever is bigoted because... Because... People online are. Exactly. And, real, and a lot of times in, in, also in real life. Again, the sad thing is this all could have worked if the movie actually acknowledged these uh, as problems. But no, we're supposed to celebrate these as the true actions of the good guys in this. And, and before anyone says, oh, well, they never actually praise it, they never exactly actually decry it. And how? Oh, oh, the main character smiles at the end. Literally, one of the last lines is, Chris, you were right! I should have been a fighter! 
She uh -huh. says, while wow, Chris is burning hastily, people. Just, just, to, just to make sure it fits still in the script. It's like they're pounding into your head. Like, you see? Chris was right all along, you idiots. <laughs> Jova, it's kind of like what happened uh, uh, years after Avengers vs. X-Men, where Cyclops said, there are going to be kids with a shirt written on it. Cyclops was right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God damn it. Uh, even with context, she is just as bad. And um, anything else I could bring up before I go? The music. Uh, I already talked about the score. No, I already mentioned the score. You know, and Dave's answer me to that. But um, um, what about the, the the technical direction kind? You know, aspect because, like you said, I do believe there are you know good directed scenes uh, and uh, some neat ideas, positive shots. Uh, what do you think? Um, I don't know. Um... Some it just some things just feel a bit weird and um and uh and 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 that that that, that bit where they're in the car exposing to each other yeah, as well. That was terrible. Mm -hmm. it's, that... like, it's like it's like it's 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 like it's like it's like they realise, oh shit, we've only got like ninety odd ninety minutes, so we have to rush everything out at the end. It's you know the sad thing? Sorry, go on. I have seen that kind of exposition played out as a joke. <laughs> in Always Sunny in Philadelphia where the characters point out no, we don't need to say this, but that one jerk-off is like no, the audience will never get it. it insists on it being in the movie that was played for laughs and yet here this supposedly serious topic movie is doing it played straight because it really thinks and, that lowly uh, of its audience we do know that uh, the, the production was rushed so it's not even a ratio to don potentially for test audience complaints huh? oh there is that huh? there, were there even time for reshoots i wonder yeah. jesus yeah. go on um Honestly, uh, yeah, that's it. To me, it just comes off as Blumhouse Productions and also Divide slash Conquer, the other production company. Um, just trying to rush out a movie on the cheap and slap the name of a um, and slap the name of another uh, more famous slasher movie on it. And well, I mean, it didn't. I mean, it didn't flop exactly, but I can imagine that a movie like this. Um, Eighteen and a half mil just eighteen and a half million dollars isn't exactly um raking in the cash, if you know what I mean. Um I mean it's not Blumhouse's worst um flop. Um that goes to uh Gem and the Holograms. Again, keep in mind the two thousand six film, despite costing more, still made more since it made twenty one point five million on a budget of nine million. Yeah, but still, um, it's money, not... Babe, so how much did you waste it on renting this? Uh, uh about two pound fifty. Okay, I thought worse. Yeah, so there you are. I spent as much as I would on a bag of chocolates on this movie. That's well, typical uh, price for renting movies around here, as, depending um, on the platforms. Yeah, in as, S in SD, by the way. And as for his gum said, life truly is a box of chocolate. You never know what you get. I certainly had no yeah, idea what you... I was in store for when we started this movie. Well, well, unless you buy the same box of chocolates, then yeah. Shut up! I'm trying to have a point. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, uh, Black Christmas 2019. It's it's shit, but considering its production, I'm not surprised. Um, All right, uh, Pedro. Well, that was a whole lot of shit. Uh, uh, I'm not even sure what to say that hasn't been said already. I mean, this the flaws of this movie are just too easy. The plot is just an excuse for the writers to jam their message down my throat. Um, again, this feels a lot like a Pure Flix movie. For those who don't know, Pure Flix is... Uh, uh, David, uh, sorry, David R. White Studio, the studio that made um, God's Not Dead. This feels yeah. like a pure flicks movie, just done in, uh, just uh, instead replace the Christianity propaganda aspect with uh, whatever it would be the term for this movie's propaganda. Sexist, rapist. Sure, oh. whatever. Like I'm not, not even sure what specific term to use, so I'll just use an umbrella that covers everything. The point is, this feels exactly like this. This is a movie that is not in any way at trying to entertain the audience. This, the entire point of this movie is for is so that the writer has an, uh, an excuse to preach about for her to preach uh, her stuff to me. 
uh, and that's basically it. Which it's again, uh, if, if she wanted, if she all. wanted to uh, apply uh, this kind of message better, I, I would be fine with it. If she also told it in the middle of a story, the the message should naturally emerge from the story. This doesn't feel no. This in here, this is the, the story feels like an excuse to preach the message. That's basically what this is. It's even this is not an attempt. This is not entertainment. This is just me going to a sermon, basically. <laughs> That's basically it. Uh, it's even what can the, I say? The, go on. It's even in go the on. poster page, Rob, because I, you, the audience is going to see it because I chose that for the thumbnail. But uh, the tagline that was in the poster for this, get this, it's uh, because Chris and everything, it uh, says, slay girls. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, as a pun enthusiast. <laughs> I'm not going to be mad about that. I'm sorry. sorry I'm a pun enthusiast too, but. They could have done better. Oh, they could have. can do better in King's Quest. Okay. <laughs> and again, so... they, I, I, I love how the poster also points out proudly from the producer of Get Out and Halloween. Yeah, this movie is totally on par with those great products. Uh, Go on, Pedro. The, for, for the rhetoric question, Pedro, which of the three Black Christmases would you prefer after all of these? To be perfectly honest, I'm not particularly big on either of them. I mean, this is obviously the worst one, but it's just too easy. Like, uh, I guess, like, leaves you you just resort to the original. Yeah, I guess it's, like, right, it's the yeah, one that's franchise is cursed. Yeah, basically. I mean, uh, uh, okay, okay. So this is like the last one with uh, like there's are no yeah, more so Black Christmas movies. Are, okay. are there any other Black Christmases we should be knowing about? Are they in the room with us right now? <laughs> Yeah. No, for the time being, no. We let's we've, we've uh, theorized we might get in one another one in the future, and uh, hopefully it will be better than this. So, oh. all, right, all right, Jova. Wow. I mean, look, I had an idea that this was going to be bad. Like I've said, the Black Christmas franchise just sadly seems to be cursed. But I think I should start off by asking. Why? Why is this film franchise cursed? What is so hard about essentially just making a more complete version of the serial killer slasher progenitor? Because again, to get Black Christmas credit, that film, while it didn't, while it did not exactly move waves, was a progenitor of the slasher film genre, and it was incredibly simple. Maybe a little too simple and incomplete, but it shouldn't be that hard to just complete the narrative while not going too over the top and just maintaining the overall scare vibe. But not only is that apparently impossible, apparently to some they consider it an insult to be that simple. Like, okay, the first remake did tell a more complete narrative, but went uber crazy. And then this one, this one barely feels like a Black Christmas movie, and then it just goes... To say it jumps the shark would be an understatement. It jumps over the frickin' moon and orbit by the end. Who was asking for Black Christmas to have a supernatural twist with mystical magic black goop that comes out of nowhere? Like, who? Who was asking I, for this? I mean, I would have if I knew in advance. So. I mean, and you know what? That's good. Good, good. The thing is, even if you enjoy that twist, you have to suffer through a very yeah. nearly headache-inducing, terrible, way too serious for its own good movie that tries to preach these messages. And yes, there are good messages hidden in this movie, but they either miss the mark or overshoot. Like, the ironic thing is, the movie does have a good potential antagonist, or at least jerking Chris... But nope, it's constantly saying that Chris was in the right, despite the fact that she does some of the most despicable things, i.e. literally burning innocent people alive. And you know what, look, as cartoonishly evil as it could have been, you could have just said all the boys involved with the fraternity were evil. And then fine, okay, they all burn, but nope, they went the extra step to say that several are being mind-controlled by the Black Liquid, so 
Guess they all have to die, and our characters have the nerve to smile about this in the end. Like, Jesus, were they the real psychopathic killers? Because like I mentioned, Chris probably killed more innocent people than this cult did, as far as we know. At the very least in the context of this movie. It's insane. And not in a good way. Like, again, like... If this was, like, their way to try and salvage things in the end, like, well, more power, I guess, no pun intended, but it doesn't save the movie, because the movie before that is a really bad bout of, again, creating a straw man, and of course setting that straw man up to fail, or in, again, what we pretty much have all agreed to call the Twitter argument, Chris is legit being called out for how she screwed up, but then they have one boy speak up and say, well, not all men, and suddenly it's like, get out! And the sad thing is, the boy even came back to help, but he's punished for it by being killed! Like, what is this movie trying to tell us, exactly? That we shouldn't come back and help people in need? I know that's probably not what they were going for, but you gotta understand, this movie sucks at conveying its messages well. And the ones that it could convey well, it shoots in the foot. Especially since they do have the point that Chris is taking things too far. That it's gone beyond a point of inspiring people and just lashing out at people. But the movie can't even come up with a good counter-argument to that, so they immediately cut off the argument from that point. It literally feels like every stereotypical person you can think of on Twitter collectively wrote this movie as an echo chamber piece, because that sure is what it feels like. Again, and it's the perfect allegory, because right at the end, even innocent people are caught in the crossfire, accused, or in this case, killed, and we're supposed to celebrate that. Good God almighty. Now, again, there is some stuff that is unintentionally hilarious, but that's not enough for me to recommend this movie. Like, maybe get, like, a clip or watch the movie up at the point where the insane black magical goop comes in. Because other than that, this movie has little to nothing of value. Yes, it was trying to tell a good message, and it failed at that message. It failed tenfold. And like I said during the Life of Strange commentary, sometimes the worst thing you can do for a message is convey it terribly. Because if anything, that sometimes gives the opposition ammunition against you when it falls flat on its face like it did with this movie. Jesus. Especially when the characters we're supposed to sympathize with are remorseless murderers. Because again, and I cannot stress this enough, the movie goes out of its way to say that several of those boys are innocent. It's like, I don't get it. Why is this movie so much at odds with itself? Like, was there someone in the writing team who realized, oh my god, this is terrible, and, you know, was trying to fight back against the stupid, but it all clashed in upon itself? I actually say Jason Blum, but he did approve Shama writing the lyrics of the stupid rap in The Visit, so... I mean, the son was able to convey those raps well enough for a kid. Uh, sure, let's go with that. Also, Christ, I forgot The Visit was a Blumhouse Productions film. But I mean, it's really just baffling more than anything. I will say this. It is a, it is the absolute pits when it comes to the Black Christmas franchise. It's the worst, easily. Like, if you're a fan of horror films, you're going to be disappointed because the kills, or lack of, suck. Or at least the good kills. If you're, like, a fan of the messages that this movie's trying to convey, it conveys them terribly. If you're a fan of Black Christmas itself, it's a terrible remake. It, the ba the, I guess the basic simplistics are, hey, there's a guy killing girls in a sorority when there are arguably other movies that have done that too. But hey, it's around Christmas time, so whoop. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. I'm actually, no, I'm gonna borrow the counter catchphrase from you, Shiri. Bah humbug. Yes. Uh, the music is, like, there. Non-existent. 
Kudos to that one Up on the Frat House song, but even that one kind of loses its luster when it's played in the credits because now we're supposed to celebrate these remorseless murderers. And yes, I said it, those girls are remorseless murderers. Again, yes, the guys who did all this screwed up stuff deserve what's coming to them, but the people who were brainwashed don't, and I get that maybe you might want to play it safe, but you would smash the stone. You got rid of the black magical goop at that point, so... Like, it wasn't like they were... It, it wasn't like they had another vat of this liquid lying around. I put it this way, Jova. I, under normal circumstances, I could believe that a character would be uh, already dizzied enough by the battle, you know, and all the chaos going on, to not notice uh, the fact that as soon as the stone is smashed, uh, you know, the, the people are going under control. But the one that throws the lantern is specifically Chris. Yeah, that's the thing. It's Chris who does it. That's what makes me linger the doubt. If it was, you know, uh, someone else, again, like our protagonist, I can't believe it would have been what I just said, you know, the chaos of the battle getting through the head. But maybe because, you know, maybe not even intentionally because they just wanted, you know, uh, to reinforce the whole Ooh, girl power to Chris, you know. She's the one doing it, and as such, it makes it makes one wonder. It really does. Again, uh, Jova, also, your rhetorical question also to you, which of the three movies you prefer at this point? I guess I'm gonna say the 2006 one. It's bad, wow. but it actually still... F Look, like I said, it actually feels like a complete film. Like, I, like the original was... <sighs> It's just that the incomplete nature of the original leaves it a lot more disappointing. I'm not gonna act like the 2006 one was masterful, but shoot, at least I didn't feel so empty from an incomplete venture. And again, to give them credit, the 2006 one feels like the most complete package of any of these movies like it wasn't trying to go out of its way to insult people from what i can understand and yeah it went overboard in some regards but at least it still felt like something that was trying to pay homage to the original while having its own new freshness this just feels like they used the name of black christmas so that they could get fans of the brand to come and you know even though it wasn't really what they were getting and again, I kind of do tend to find that kind of stuff almost on par with false advertising. <laughs> like, ah, uh, you thought you were getting a Black Christmas remake. Nope, you're getting a thinly veiled, terribly written PSA. Enjoy! Every character in this movie is terrible, but we want you to root for these ones. Like, it's like you said, I think the only person who's not terrible in this, or just, you know, boring or there is riley and even still i wouldn't call riley perfect like they do She's focus a blank slate in which which has to absorb what happens around her you know and decide what to do classic type of protagonist like yeah she's got the trauma but it doesn't feel like she has much else going for her she you know what's the sad thing in the end it feels like she's just a sock puppet bit to say that chris <laughs> was right which honestly leads me to wonder were they actually aiming for Chris to be the main hero of this? Because, honestly, it feels like Chris is the one with the most agency, seeing as how she's the one who even saves Riley's butt before they can take her out, because she brings the girls from the house, and, yeah, again, somehow that killer killed that security guard, but then managed to miss all the girls at that house party, I guess, but I guess killed the guys or whatever, and... That's a thing so that they could come and epically fight the fraternity bros. Like, what are they even going to tell college campus about this? Well, you see, officer, we had to burn them alive because they were using evil black music goop from the statue that I petitioned to get outlawed. And yeah, don't get me wrong, from what do we understand? Calvin Hawthorne was apparently a terrible person. And that's why his statue got removed. But again, when you get down to it, this whole plot is Chris's fault since she was the one who petitioned to get it off and it was only by it being off the property that the fraternity was able to discover the black evil magic goop in it. To and be what's fair, she didn't know, like, it's not, this was not actually acted out of malice. 
True, yeah, but I just love it that almost everything bad in this movie can be tied back to Chris. Even the... Even the petition that she had be signed was how they were able to track down girls to murder. Although, again, it was still inconsistent because, oh, some girls, they just chose not to murder for some reason. Never explained. And yeah, Chris is the worst. She is a toxic friend. She pushes her friends around to get on her level or get with her program, otherwise they'll just disappear. Or, you used to be a fighter, literally posts a video online without her friends' permission, and pretty much resorts to whataboutism in like, Oh, what you did was wrong. Well, you see, I was trying to spread the message. Well, yeah? Well, what about and insert this or that? And again, the whole, did you just not all mend me? Like, okay, even if that's what the boy was going for, I do not think it is fair that that was supposedly what gets her off the hook. Just because he was pointing out legit problems with her side of the argument, but again, as soon as the... Not all men thing comes out, of course they latch onto that as a means to shut him out. Which again, ironically, resembles a lot of the toxic arguments you see on Twitter, but the movie doesn't seem aware of it. Again, that's the biggest irony. This movie could actually be secretly genius, but it misses the mark at every regard to do that. It is just so terrible. Like I said, 2006 one to me is the best one. That's not saying much. Like, I just don't get what is so hard about this franchise to actually get right. And again, the first movie had, like, the most reason to suck because it was the first. So, even though it was a progenitor of the genre, it was not, you know, um, the craft was not refined. But all these years later, and they still can't, maybe Black Christmas best just stay dead at this point unless that fan film made in 2021 is actually good but that's a fan film there was a fan film i don't know anything about it yeah mm. there was apparently a fan film made in 2021 i mean the premise is easy to replicate this proposal you know as long as you have a big house with different layers yeah you can do that mm -hmm. it's called it's me billy a black christmas fan film Maybe someday we'll check that out, but for now, let's just close the book on this franchise. Well, that means I'm next to... Oh, fuck me. Again, part of me wish I had alcohol, you know, but something tells me that I might have said, you know, under the influence of spirit, stuff that I would have probably regretted the day after, so I think it's better this way. Needless to say, I'm not pleased in the slightest. I don't, there's not much joy to be had in this movie under any capacity. Not even fun to make fun of, you know. Um, so let me start with the things that I do like. Um, the composition of the shots overall, I actually do not mind. Uh, some stuff like the tracking or the big shots that pander from one location to another, sure, they might be a bit predictable, but, you know, they still are pretty in execution and convey what they need to do. I think they're mostly ruined by the loud noise for the jump scares, but otherwise they probably would work very well. Shame that we also don't really replicate the iconic shot that was in the previous two movies of the eye watching from something close up to that. You know, that was a staple of the movies until now. So that's kind of sad. And like I said, I honestly could believe this premise could genuinely work with the minimal retooling. Yes, even the supernatural twist. If anything, that's not too bad of a, you know, refreshing idea for the twist. Um, the only thing that you need to do, well, okay, firstly, firstly to attach the movie to the Black Christmas franchise more properly is to have one of the stories of member being Billy. If you want to pull a twist or, you know, play with the expectation, make sure that maybe he is not the killer. Maybe, you know, if you want to do that. Um, but... Uh, still have the whole angle of, uh, you know, sorority sisters, you know, being oppressed by this, uh, by this angle, without necessarily having to turn into caricature, because I know it would be probably easy to do that, and at that point, the message gets blurred, potentially, you know, and still have the final twist being revealed that, you know, the fact that 
these are mind controlled by these magical blood, complete with Carrie Eloise being the classic, you know, British Bond villain that explains everything, you know. That's basically serve on a civil prior to have uh, like a fun ramp of empowerment, uh, you know. Uh, using allegories for the message without having to be too direct, you know, in order to, you know, still have a fun adventure with it. But uh, because of the, the way the movie takes itself this too seriously and uh, in the most annoying, demeaning and, you know, dread way possible, just makes it, uh, you know, unpleasant to, to get through every single time. And it's so frustrating because i know that jason blum is capable better and the, act, the actors and the the directing probably are the vast majority at fault sure someone has to be blamed of course but uh, i don't know it just feels to me that uh, it was a matter of a combination of factors maybe it might have been tied to the whole rushing the movie out potentially i don't know just I, something i have a gut feeling that tells me that there is something not as, uh, you know, uh, or take Spartan as, uh, you know, uh, as saying someone genuinely believed what was written in this. I don't know. Whether or not they believed in it, it's like we said, you can have good intentions or be passionate behind it. That is not always going to translate out to a good product, sadly. Um, again... I don't mind the rhythm, for example, her main character, Riley. Uh, she tries to, you know, recover from, you know, her trauma. And being a blank slate, she has to witness what happens at the, you know, college um, with, uh, and deciding what to do because she's confronted by different ideals. Again, I don't mind this kind of protagonist. Um, I'm not sure if I would have, it would have been fine if Chris was actually supposed to be an intended also strongman and you know, revealed to be wrong, because it still causes a lot of unknowing to that, and I get the idea you can get across with less obnoxiousness, potentially, you know. The, the other sorority sisters are a bit of blank slates themselves, unfortunately, you know. Um, the, the boyfriend guy uh, tries to be a mix of Pita, uh, of the original movie and uh, the the nice guy that was in the, in the 2006 movie but unfortunately aside from the twitter argument scene he unfortunately doesn't have much to say and the movie rewards him by stabbing him in the head with a headshot hey that actually begs the question if the sorority is all about yeah i'm sorry um if the fraternity dko was all about men's superiority or whatnot why didn't they just knock him out like why did they because kill him siding with them i don't know it just it, it feels contrived in all possible ways Jordan. i mean it's not like we again. saw them take another boy who was siding with it's, the girls oh wait no they took landon why not just kidnap him too and it's also brainwash the same him? reason it's also tied to you know that uh, that girl siding with them and them being okay only to kill her immediately after. The, what the movie is trying to come across is that they view her only as a tool and as a toy that they can play with. But unfortunately, that's that still feels like you know not good writing uh, with what they try to convey. Fortunately, it's also tiresome. That's what I mean. And I know again, like I said at the beginning. Most of us might not be the ones that, uh, you know, need to have the, the last word in this kind of saying um, for this kind of thing. But uh, what I can give as my opinion is that I've seen pieces, uh, me fictional media, tries to talk about, you know, these kind of themes, uh, having using allegories for it or even being directed, that at least are much better than this. And a lot of them did not have the need to attach themselves to another property to... I don't know, cash back on that. Yeah. That might be Jason Blum's idea. Um, Shiri, do you mind if I ask a question? Yeah. Have you seen the Mona? Not yet, no. It's a Netflix animated movie which was supposed to be originally animated by Blue Skies, but uh, after the Fox buyout, uh, Disney mysteriously did not want to support the movie. Mm, oh, I you wonder. mean after they killed Blue Sky? Well, that's not even what about that. If, if I recall clearly, Jenny was based on a... I don't know if it's a straight-up comic or a webcomic. It was a comic. Okay. Um, 
and uses uh, a fantasy setting to have an allegory about uh, uh, gender fluidity and transgenderism of Jova. But uh, again, it's a much more enjoyable product, even both the original source material and the adaptation on that, uh, you know, in trying to convey the message. And even, like I said, there are even other products that talk more directly about these things. And if they had to be serious, they are properly drama about it instead of, you know, pampering sweet strawmen on strings like their puppet, puppets. It's like, like I said, it's also tiresome. Uh, and at, at, least, at least I guess I'm glad that we work for all of this so we don't have to look at this movie anymore. There are better things, uh, you know, that you can have, can look around to inform yourself for these kind of messages, people. Please inform yourself and don't be like Chris. Be better. Shiroi. Oh boy. Um... <laughs> There were a couple of funny moments here and there, but this movie, by and large, sucked, like, big time. Um, I'll start from the beginning, I guess. Um, I kind of figured that there was more than one of them because the teleporting didn't make sense, although considering the black magic we get at the end, they could have just straight up said, no, this is just one person teleporting. <laughs> um, about the professor... I feel like I spoke too soon because, yeah, I didn't feel like he was a straw man because, like, they absolutely uh, exist and they do pull that kind of nonsense. But then we, but yeah, university professors are, for the most part, dicks, but they're also not cultists who practice black magic with goop. So, um. You don't say. <laughs> yeah, so the movie just kind of um, slapped that original point in the face, I guess. I remember and... it's in like the last 20 or so minutes of the film, too. And I was joking when I said it, it would be him, and by the remember, way. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not even a reshoot done for, you know, for test audiences. Like, when I said the movie was telegraphing its bad guys, I was kind of hoping it would prove me wrong, but nope. Pretty much everyone I thought was a bad guy ended up being a bad guy. Yeah, I thought he was just being a vindictive uh, uni professor, but no, like, he was literally a um, big bad Englishman, I guess. What caused Carrie Elwes to say yes to this role? Maybe the ending scene was funny enough for the actors to engage I in. So. I, I don't know. I cannot even bust up Pedro's joke about gambling deaths. I believe there has to be a line at some point. Hmm. Let me see if I can come up with another one. Uh, Money laundering? Too... Sure, I was gonna go for a dirtier one, but that works. No, what was your what was your suggestion? Now I'm curious. Uh, pr prostitution. Um, that's there. You go. That's there. One. Ah. Continue, Shiroi. That. Um. Okay. No. Before I get to that scene, there was the um. It was the performance, which was like a funny roast at the time because they were directly um, prompted by the protagonist. The reason it went the way it did was because they were um, making a show of the guy in the back, you know, being incredibly shit. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously that came back to bite them. Don't know why it had to be Alex. Like, they could have picked any audience member. Again, this was, like, a university party. Like, there were probably multiple people taking videos. I can't imagine Alex was the only one who would have uploaded footage. Um, Alex is shit, by the way. <laughs> who isn't in this movie? Alex is the biggest offender. Like, I guess the protagonist isn't too bad. Like, half the time, the way she's acting is because of, as Tio said, like, she's traumatized and isn't really thinking at all like also, she's just going with the motions also i don't remember there being a character named alex in this I movie you're referring as chris, so. chris oh. like, why do i think alex i, I don't know, know why that name was in my head for some reason i probably think you're trying to go back to your alleys <laughs> um there's um hmm. oh yeah that middle scene um 
like I already talked about the whole not all men bit, which like Alex is definitely uh, not oh, fuck. Um, <laughs> Chris, Chris, sorry, why? <laughs> Did you watch uh, like a movie with a character called Alex before this or something? Like no, I don't know why this is happening. Actually, this movie has fried my brain completely. It was me and Peter were talking about, and Deji were talking about Alex Mark before coming in on the on strong commentary. Subliminal messaging? I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't even in call. It's, it's because of a black goo. Okay? Oh, the course. goo! Damn it! The goo goes through the five G. I still can't believe that with a straight face, somebody legit wrote, and yes, in the last 20 minutes, there's a magical goo that causes all the sexism and rapists to band together on this crap. That end scene is so funny, and I don't think they meant it to be at all. Yeah. <laughs> you, once, you, you, once said, uh, you once said something that, uh, and thought that that was, oh, sorry, no, I have MGS on the brain. Uh, it's a shame we're not recording the uh, those games anymore, because it sounds like you need some of it in, uh, in there again. Maybe she had Half-Life Alex on the brain. It's Alex with a Y. Also, the yeah. brain? Yeah, brain, that's another term for brain, mind. See, I, I just know bran is in, like, the really bad breakfast cereal. And uh, now you're thinking because you're hungry, probably. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> this is turning into yeah, a good like, therapy we're, session. Yeah, we're way off the tangent, actually. Right. Yeah, um, yeah that middle scene. Um, Chris was definitely made to be a straw man, honestly. Um, I didn't hear you, like, say that the first time in the commentary, Tio, but, like, yeah, she definitely is because... I've I explained the context of um how the phrase not all men um you know it can be a bad thing depending on the context and I gave an example but I feel like they only made the boyfriend the bad guy because um they were trying to take attention away from Chris and it's just like that didn't need to even need to happen. And hell, the only reason he died was because um, he had that moment of his girlfriend shoving him out the door. And it's like, oh yeah, they've had a moment like that. One of those two is dying. And it's like, that scene just didn't need to exist. It was just there to add a lot of bullshit to the message that was already ruined, like in part in this movie. It's funny you mentioned that Chris was written as a straw man because the movie never acknowledges that she's a straw man. It's like one writer was writing her to be obviously the show of one straw man, or, you know, to show that, you know, taking the stuff to the extreme is bad, but then another writer went, no, we're making her the good guy. Everything she does is completely justified. Again, like Tio mentioned, last minute line of Ray Early saying, You were right, Chris. I should be a fighter. You were right about everything. It's like, maybe because she was the biggest rebel out of all of them, they wanted to, like, champion her. I don't know. But um, was she the one who set everyone on fire, or was yes. that someone else? Again, it's uh, sure, right, pretty much almost... Okay, aside from the rape and the killing up until the last second when you think about it a lot of the real crap stuff again can be tied back to chris in some way shape or form and she's never called out on it ever because like locking them in the room yeah sure but like setting them on fire and then doing it no terrible no, we, we don't do that especially after it's revealed that like more than half the group were under the influence of mind control from magic goop this is still silly to say. <laughs> this I is wish... a, a Black Christmas movie, sorry. I wish it was, like, a parody movie instead, honestly. Mm -hmm. It would have been at least silly, I don't know. Sure, but that's Maybe the don't even. Right there. Mm -hmm. that, that, that would mean we actually have to entertain the audience. That's not what we're here for. We need to waggle our fingers at them. Yeah. Uh, I I didn't learn anything. So. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Well, clearly that's clearly that's your problem. <laughs> Skill issue. Skill issue. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Merry Christmas, I guess. Um. I think that's it. I don't really have anything to say about the music. So, um, sure. Which of the Black Christmas 
trilogy do you think is the best? Mm, I feel like the first one is the safest option. Mm -hmm. This one's too frustrating, because, like, that middle scene genuinely made me, like, I, I don't even want to, like, piece it apart in intricate detail of just getting to the main point instead, because, oh, that, that scene a lot of shit, so, um... Yep. Yeah, this this uh, one was probably the worst. Easily. Mm -hmm. I also I also think I forgot even mentioning on my own, so I'll be just very quick. Um, yeah, honestly, I'm the, done the, anyway. The original one, because simply put, uh, this one just is just a migraine to get without any sense of enjoyment. I'll be damned before I actually start to say that something is uh, uh, a product uh, done, you know, mangled by the Weinstein's is better than something else. Uh, so I'm just I'm just retreating to the safest option that there is. Uh, Anyway, that concludes this joyful experience. Uh, Wait, I learned one it. lesson from this movie. What? Don't drink the what? black Kool-Aid. So you should oh. say that uh, I need to stop drinking Coca-Cola or something because it's a darker in color inside. No, oh, Tio, yeah, that would be racist of me. Stop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm too so I, 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 I you know I retreat what I said. I'm too sober for this conversation. <laughs> yes. Kiri, <laughs> please tell us where we're supposed to go next. Um. Well, we so you fun, finally Shira. got. Do the... you have some for us? Well, we finally got the tar off the sleigh, so we can actually get <laughs> moving now. Okay. Um. I'm not too sure where we're going. Um. Hopefully, somewhere more fun. Well, I guess, well, I guess we go to see. the North Pole. Again. Listen, I'm not driving. Like, I'd be, I can't drive. <laughs> Again, drove like, what? It's like the, the, the fifth time we've gone to see Santa. It's getting ridiculous. Well, I don't think we're here to see Santa this time. Oh. oh. Well, I guess anything would be better in comparison, I suppose. Then. How about one of his uh, little helpers, then? Well, I guess that's what we'll find out next time. See ya. See ya. See ya. See ya.